Well, hello and welcome to Talk Leadership with Cedric. Welcome to my world, folks. You know, everybody needs a little TLC. And uh, this is Talk Leadership with Cedric. And I am your host, Cedric LaFleur. And this is where we talk about uh, leadership and personal growth of business leaders, educators, and local thought leaders. Our goal is to introduce our audience to leaders who are making an impact with innovative ideas. You know, our guiding leadership principle is the law of contribution, which says growing yourself enables you to grow others. See, you can't give what you don't have so first you must grow yourself in order to grow others so tonight folks we have another dynamic leader with us uh, in studio and I'm excited to talk with this young brother um, you know every week I like to do a proper introduction of my guests so allow me to do a proper introduction of mr. Brandon C Chung now Brandon is the principal at uh, Rich Richard Allen Academy in Hamilton Ohio um, he be believes that being an educator is a gift that God gives you in order to equip children to be able to navigate effectively through this journey called life. That's a noble cause, folks. He believes that every child has the capacity to become product a productive citizen of this world, no matter their circumstances. In other words, it doesn't matter where they started. It's about the journey and where they end up. Uh, Brandon uh, originates from my, my, oh, Miami, Ohio, but uh, he resides in Cincinnati, Ohio. Don't worry, Steelers fan. He, he's not a Bengals fan, okay? Um, and he's been there for the last 10 years. Um, he is an alumnus of the great Bethune-Cookman University. Brandon was recently awarded the 40 Under 40 Award, which is given to alumni that are excelling above and beyond in their profession. Now, one of Brandon's goals is to open up a nonprofit that will help uh, to uh, get more African-American males in education. In his free time, Brandon enjoys golfing, swimming, and traveling. So let's welcome Mr. Brandon C. Chong to the show. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you here and uh, looking forward to uh, this conversation. And I was telling you before we got on air, you know, it, it, there's not a lot of men in education and, and it's an even smaller number of African-American men who are in education. So uh, right off the bat, I applaud you um, uh, for that. And uh, so hey, let's get started here. I, you know, I read a little bit about your background, but I would just like to hear from you about your your career path, how you got started, and, and, and what uh, got you to where you are today. Um, so uh, I originally am from Miami, Florida. Um, and as you said, I, I graduated from the great Bethune-Cookman University, uh, entered, to, entered to serve and, and depart to, to, I'm sorry, entered to learn and depart to serve. Um, and so when I graduated from Bethune-Cookman, um, I was working uh, for a nonprofit organization in um, Miami. And then um, I got a phone call from uh, someone up here that said that uh, I have a job for you to come and teach, um, and, but you have to come and move to, to Ohio. Um, and I need you to come right now. And that happened to be uh, someone that I call my, my second mother um, and my, my guardian angel, the person that, that the Lord sent uh, to watch over me. Um, and so I came here with no expectations, um, came here and started teaching at Richard Allen 10 years ago um, and started out as the teacher um, for seven years and then became the assistant principal for three years. Um, and now I've been recently promoted to, to principal. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very big on the fact that, you know, God, uh, my grandmother always says, if you want to, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what you got planned. And so my plan was never to, uh, to to come to Ohio, but God had other arrangements. So so here I am. Wow, well, that is um, that's awesome, uh, and congratulations on Thank the uh, promotion to principal. I know that uh, you're looking forward to uh, to leading uh, leading uh, Richard Allen. Um, so, from a, a system principal standpoint, what was the most fun part of the job? Um, I think the most fun part of the job for me was um, still being in the classroom um, and working with the students, but also 
uh, helping teachers in, in other areas as well. Um, I think that's something that, that prepped me to be uh, the principal because I, get, I got to do both sides. Um, I got to still be in the classroom and teach um, and so still gaining experience and, and gaining more knowledge that I can pass on as the principal, but also sitting down with teachers and just discussing how, how to better manage your students and just talk about what the goals are um, and some things that, that you want to have um, personally done and professionally. So I, I think that was that was a great thing um, to be able to, to be able to do for the last three years. Wow. Um, well, again, I know that uh, it's be must be exciting uh, to now be um, taking the lead, right, and, and, and leading the charge. Um, so uh, that's awesome. Um, so, what are you looking forward to uh, most in in the new role? Um, I, I'm looking forward to most uh, putting forth uh, the vision that I've had for the school for the last few years. Um, I'm looking forward to helping uh, educators grow. Um, I'm very big on uh, helping people find what their purpose is, uh, not just in education, but in life in general, because I believe if you if you find out what your purpose is, you'll do any and everything to make sure that that you reach that goal and that purpose is, is fulfilled. Um, so it, I don't want it to just be my vision and my purpose. I want you to feel like you're part of the vision and part of the purpose. And within my vision and my purpose, you find your own. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, well, that's awesome. You know, I was just reading a study and I've been sharing it with some superintendents. Uh, in fact, I shared it with one in a meeting today and, and um, with a few via uh, email. And I'll be doing it again later this week with, with a couple in person. Uh, McKenzie uh, recently did a study. Um, and in this, the, the title of the study was, um, you know, help your employees find their purpose or you will watch them leave. Right. That catch your attention right away. Right. The next thing uh, the study said was 85 percent. Get this now. Eighty five percent of the leaders or the executives said that they got their purpose in their work. Only 15 percent of the frontline employees uh, agreed and said that they got their purpose from their work. Right. And, and but what the study was saying is that um, leader is a leader's responsibility to help their employees find that purpose in work and make sure that it matches with their work. Because otherwise what's happening is, this is why you're seeing an exit. It's not just in education, but in, in, in a lot of career fields, people are leaving. You know, COVID woke a lot of people up. So uh, yeah. I applaud you for, for um, taking, that, uh, taking that, that cause and, and, and not even a burden, just the, the cause on to help uh, your team. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so, it, you know, I said earlier that there are um, not many uh, black men in education, right? Um, so what do you think is the biggest uh, impact that you can make for young uh, black boys um, in, in education? Um, for me, I just think it's about just being an example. Uh, as you know, you know, in this day and age, in this generation, Everything is put on uh, technology. Everything is put on social media. Um, and so what kids see is what they think is out there. Um, so I take great pride in knowing that, you know, I, I'm one of a few black male educators who are a principal, um, especially in this district. I'm the only male principal in, in this district. Um, and so I take great pride in that and I, and I, uh, I make sure that I'm setting an example, not just in this building, but outside in the community as well. Um, because, you know, I've been here for 10 years and there are families here that have been with Richard Allen for years and they, they know my face, they see me in the grocery store. Um, so even so much as, you know, what, what I wear to the grocery store um, is important to me because you never know who's watching. Um, sure. And I've had the great pleasure of when I was growing up to have uh, somebody like my grandfather, who, who was a great example of, uh, of, of a black male and how to, how to you know, carry yourself and how, um, how to carry yourself in business, how to carry yourself personally, how to carry yourself outside in the community, um, how to handle children, how to handle your family. Um, so all those things I learned and I took those morals and values to get me to this point now. Um, so I take great pride in, in knowing that I'm an example 
for black, not only black males, but just any male, all the males and all the young boys and all the young girls around, um, I, I'm an example to, for, for them. And so I continue to, my prayer is to continue to be an example and continue to let God lead me to do and, and be the leader that he has called me to, do, to be. Wow. Well, that, that's, um, that's awesome. And, and, you know, um, I know that, um, your grandfather would be proud to know that, Hey, you're taking on, um, that charge, right. And, and you, it sounds like you picked up some things from him, um, that's going to help you, um, take on that charge and, uh, and lead that. And on the other side, uh, those young men, some, you know, today, some, you don't even know, you haven't met them yet that you're going to be able to make, uh, Absolutely. that positive impact in their life. Right. And uh, I remember, uh, Brandon, now I'm 54. Um, so I wasn't in first grade like yesterday. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still remember my first grade principal, my elementary school principal. He was my principal from first to third grade. And he passed away. Mr. Ralph Wilson. In fact, the school is named after him now. Um, but he had such an impact. I just remember him being this big guy who was always smiling. He would always come in the lunchroom and ask us, uh, were we having a good day and were we enjoying lunch? Every day, that's what I remember him doing, right? Positive impact, um, small thing, just asking how I'm doing, making a big impact. Still, years later, now he passed away when I was in third grade. And mm -hmm. I still remember that. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the journey that you uh, have with the impact that you make on those uh, young students at Richard Allen and, and in your community. Yeah, you you uh, you bring up a good point because, you know, uh, when um, when you look back on your life, uh, we have my, my cousin um, who's no longer with us. Um, he had a saying, you know, everybody has um, a time, a date that you're born and a date that you're that you're gone but it's what you do with that dash in between that makes a difference. Um, and so you bring up a good point about, uh, about how you still have that memory in, in your head. Um, and I think that's, that's what's important, not just for us sitting here talking and those people listening, but just families and parents all across the world, you know, making sure that those, those kids are getting positive experiences um, in the school and, and at home and outside in the community because those yes. are the things that stick with us. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, when we're, when we're all gone and the Lord calls us home, we have to leave all this stuff behind. But when, but when it's your time, you still have all those memories that you, that you can hold on to and those positive experiences. So I'm just glad to, to be able to, to give that. Right, you're absolutely right about that. Um, absolutely love that. So at Richard Allen, how, um, has your team handled the adversity around, you know, uh, COVID has obviously impacted the entire world, right? But but how did you guys uh, handle this and how you're ready to move forward from it? Um, well, we we basically changed the mindset. Um, you know, when when we're in these walls, we just control what's what's in here. Uh, we can't really con we couldn't really control what was going on on the outside, so we had to really just change the mindset of the people in this building and say, you know, all this stuff is going on out there, but those parents are sending these kids here to make sure they get an education. And so we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that we stay open and make sure that we're giving the best education to our students every single day. And thank God that we were able to do that. Uh, we, we actually were able to, at, at one point uh, of the school year, go from being hybrid which was uh, students came two days a week to actually full-fledged opening up. Um, and, you know, my principal and I are very spiritual people. So I, we take it to the fact that, uh, that, that we, we came over this building and we prayed over this building and, 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 and put some oil on it to make sure that it was protected. Uh, and, and God made sure that we, that we saw through to the end of the school year and, and, um, and our test scores and everything proved it. Kids excelled. Um, you know, teachers excelled in, in, in teaching the kids and um, excelled in, in personal ways. We, we, uh, we were able to, to, to end the, the year on a positive note. Uh, and I think that's something that a lot of schools really can't say. Um, a lot of schools never even were able to open up. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's a blessing that we were able to, 
um, give kids the experience of being in school, not only academically, but to still be able to be social. Um, you know, I'm sure, as you know, you've looked um, at the news and everything, and you've seen that people are, are dealing with um, depression um, a lot more right now because of COVID, because people have been inside. Um, and I and I think it's it's uh, it's great uh, that our school was able to stay open so that our kids didn't have to, to deal with that as much. Um, when they went home, they still were able to be inter, uh, interactive with teachers and with their with their classmates so that it, it, they felt some kind of normalcy. And so that was the biggest thing for us. Wow, well, that's um, that, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. And um, it's good that you guys were able to help bridge that gap for for kids. And as uh, overall, um, as students go back to school, as um, uh, educators come back, right, everybody uh, well, some people may be on a little bit of an, uh, a little bit of an edge. Right. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was a, a game changer. Um, you think about uh, this, Brandon, if. In December of 2019, if I would have called you and said, I didn't know you then, but if I would have called your number randomly and said, I just want to let you know that um, in March, uh, not only your subdivision, not only your city, not only your state, but these United States, in fact, the whole world is going to be shut down. Nobody will be able to leave their house and go to work or go enjoy the things that they want. You'd have been like, uh oh, this guy's crazy. Call the police, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But you now we and, know. And, and for me, you might have had to leave a voicemail because I usually don't answer numbers that I don't recognize. <laughs> so you would have to leave a voicemail. <laughs> right. And um, but now we know that those type of things can happen. So when students come back, they may be on a little bit of an edge. So, you know, this is where social emotional learning comes in and, and even helping the, uh, social emotionally helping teachers and, and faculty um, um, uh, I guess get through. Uh, this uh, a little bit more, especially with with uh, the positivity rate starting to reverse now uh, with this uh, with this Delta uh, variant. So, um, but it's good that you guys were able to adjust. So, what, what's one or two things that you love about your staff and, and your team? Um, one thing I love about about uh, my staff is that they're flexible. Uh, we don't, no matter what challenge or task um, we put in front of them, um, they, they, you may not like it, um, you know, you, you, but, but you never, you never leave that on, you know, at, at everybody has a boss at some point. So you, you're not always going to like what your boss um, asks you to do or charges you to do, um, but you do it to the best of your ability and, and you make sure that, you know, Hey, if it, do, if it doesn't work, then at least you you said that you put forth your best effort, um, and that's that's something that that I can honestly say that my staff uh, does very well. Uh, you may not like what I say, you may not like uh, what I put forth, uh, the task that I put forth in front of you, um, but you're going to do it to your best of, of your ability, and then let's see what the outcome is. Um, wow. And then the other thing I also love is their dedication. Um, we, we've had people here that have been at Richard Allen for 17 and 18 years, um, and they're dedicated not only to, you know, to, cause they could go anywhere. Um, and you sure. know, and I, and I, I say that about a lot of educators, um, especially when I talk to other educators, you don't really see nowadays, um, people staying in the same school district for, for that many years anymore. Um, it's not like when I was in school or when you were in school where people stayed for 30 and 35 years and, you know, everybody knew them and they retired. People are leaving to go find the next job or just leaving education in general. Um, so mm -hmm. the fact that they're dedicated to the purpose and the vision um, here at Richard Allen is is the number one thing for me. And it, and it means a lot to me. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, longevity, longevity definitely uh, says a lot about uh, the culture um, at a school, um, even in, in corporate America, when I was in, in corporate, um, y y culture meant a lot. Um, and you could tell if there was a great culture by, you know, the longevity of people. Right. So, yeah. so um, awesome. Um, so what would you say to someone, uh, that's thinking about becoming a teacher, right? So, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that are that are in college right now and are uh, high schoolers considering um, what they're going to do in college. Uh, what would you say to them 
if they're thinking about becoming a teacher but not sure if it's the right thing for them? Um, the, well, the most important thing to me uh, when I decided to be an educator um, was the, the purpose behind it. Um, everybody knows that we, that we as educators don't make the most money um, and we're not always appreciated the, the, in, the, in the best way. Um, I think that's something positive that COVID has, has done, uh, has kind of uh, for first responders, nurses and, and doctors, um, and for educators that we've, the, the light has kind of shined on us a little bit more. Um, but when you're in edu when you decide to get into education, you're doing it because you want to make a difference. Um, and, and I believe that, you know, every job has its role in the world and every job makes a difference in some way, shape or form, but there's a different kind of purpose to be an educator because you're, you're shaping the lives of kids. And these kids eventually, when you get old, when, when I get old, the kids that I've taught and mentored are gonna do things in the world that's gonna shape how I live out the rest of my days. And so I, I'm glad that I'm a part of that and that I'm able to, to have an impact on, on students' lives who eventually are gonna have impacts uh, on the world. Um, so people who are trying to, or thinking about education, um, really need to think about that and, and just picture it in, in, in their mind. You're not doing it for the money, you're doing it for the purpose, you're doing it to serve. Uh, and, and as long as you're, you have the right mindset, and you know, for all the young edu the young educators out there who are thinking about it, it's not going to be easy. It's not gotten right. easier um, as time has gone on, <laughs> especially with COVID. Right. Now it's gotten harder. Um, right. And you know, we've seen more and more people leaving the profession because of the stress of it. But I would just say, make sure you know who God is. Whatever, whatever that that whoever that may be. You make sure that you know who God is because you're going to need to rely on him most days. Make sure you find an outlet that's going to keep you at peace, keep you at bay. Make sure you have a support system and make sure you remember the purpose at all times. Yes, absolutely. I see uh, Dominique McQueen has joined and she said, hey, I'm, I'm late. But no, you're not late. You're, you're early. Uh, for uh, that's my cousin, actually. That's okay. one of my cousins. You're right, right on time. Awesome, exactly. Uh, you're early to hear um, uh, Brandon speak. Uh, so thank you, uh, Dominique, for uh, for tuning in. I appreciate that. Um, so, oh, let's see here. I'm gonna put a few comments up on the screen here. Uh, Alita Benson says, "Great job, Brandon." That's my second mom. That's the one. That's the one that. That's the one that made the phone call to get me to this point. I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you if it wasn't for her. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, well, welcome, uh, Brandon's uh, second mom. So you know, Brandon, uh, the law of curiosity says growth is stimulated by asking why. In other words, ask more questions. Right. So as a leader, how, how is how um, do you come up with great questions to ask people? Um, well, for the most part, again, I go back to, to the purpose. Um, you know, I, I, when I ask questions um, about, you know, what you taught today or, or how did you think that went and we have conversations, my questions are going to be driven back to what the purpose is. Um, and one thing, you know, I always try to make sure to tell people is that it's not, it's not personal. Whatever, whatever questions I ask has nothing to do with you personally. It always has to do with what the purpose is, and that's educating our students. So again, we find the if I if you find the purpose in what I'm saying, then you're going to do it to your best ability, and you're going to make sure that it gets fulfilled to make sure that the students are learning. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you know, uh, I, why well, I just love uh, what you what you just said, and we always have to remember that the students are the uh, the end point, right? They're, they're, the, they're the ones that we should be focused on, on helping them uh, grow and, and get better and, and know that it's a safe place uh, in school. So I have people who are um, uh, listening and, and, and watching uh, my show. They may watch it live and some will watch it um, in replay, right? But they're in the youth development space. 
And uh, so what are one or two things that they need to know or understand before they try to go have a meeting with you about coming into your school to to bring youth development programs or to work with, with your teachers? Um, well, we I basically have an open door policy for any community partners who are working with youth. Um, but uh, again, I'll go back to what my what I always continue to say, um, your purpose. What is your what is your purpose behind um, coming into the school and what do you have to offer to my students? Um, so that's that's the biggest thing. If you tell me what the purpose is and you tell me uh, how it's going to develop my students, then we will work it out any way that we that we can. Um, because, again, I'm always about trying to make sure that my students have the utmost experiences. Um, you know, even for even if you live in a, in a low income family neighborhood, um, giving you experiences that you would that you would never have that that the other school districts would have. Um, so anybody that's that's willing, that's listening right now, that's in the surrounding areas and you feel like you have something great and innovative that you want to bring to Richard Allen Academy. You just give me a call. We're on 1206 Schuler Avenue. You come right down here. You you give me your uh, your spill and let me know what you can do for us. And I'll let you know what you can def what we can definitely do for you. Wow. Well, that's awesome. So, you know, I want to share this this video, uh, Brandon, because you said it several times, understanding your purpose and your why. And I think that our audience will really is going to tie to this message. Um, uh, a, a friend of mine um, shared this video with me um, a couple of weeks ago, and it's all about understanding that why you, you'll see the tie in here in just a second. I'm going to share with the with the audience.
That is, uh, Brennan, I, I think Mary uh, mat matches up to what you've been saying. You said it several times about helping people understand their why and their purpose, right? Absolutely. Um, um, and uh, ever since I saw that, um, I, I, this has been on my mind. And then when you said it several times, I said, I had to share this with the audience. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, Brandon, we have a segment on the show that we call Would You Rather? So uh, let me, let's play a couple of rounds of, of, of Would You Rather. All right. So here we go. Would you do rather... I win money at the end of this? <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how many questions I get right, do I, do I win money? You win the opportunity to uh, enjoy another great day tomorrow off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well I, I enjoy that for free. Thank the Lord. <laughs> so um, would you rather win the lottery or not have to pay taxes? Uh, win the lottery. OK. And audience, you can participate in this. You know, you can just put your answer right in the uh, in the comment section. Would you rather have a million dollars or a million friends? A million dollars. That's too many friends. <laughs> that's, that's way too many friends. <laughs> uh, would you rather be the smartest person or the funniest person? The funniest. I never. I have a saying. I never want to be the smartest person in the room. That's the, that you can't gain any wisdom and grow if you're the smartest person in the room. So I'd rather be funny. Absolutely. Would you rather um, be a ninja or a pirate? Hmm. I like the water, so I guess I'd be a pirate. Pirate, all right. Would you rather meet your great grandparents or your great grandchildren? Um, my great grandfather. I met my great grandmother, so I would I would love to meet my great grandfather. From what I'm told, um, he would have loved me, and I would I would have loved him. So it would have uh, it would have been great to to meet him in person. Okay. All right. Awesome. A, a few more here. Uh, would you rather be talented and poor or wealthy because you have good connections? Well, I believe if you're talented, you eventually you won't be poor because because uh, <laughs> if you're a person of many talents, eventually you have one of those talents will break through if you keep working hard. So I'd rather be talented and broke. Absolutely. All right. Would you rather own your own private island or your own private jet? My own private island. Your own private island. All right. Last one that I ask everybody. Would you rather have a million dollars in Amazon gift cards or one hundred thousand dollars in real money? A hundred thousand dollars in real money. I can, I can do so much more with that than than spending money on Amazon. I'm not that big of a shopper. I'm not that big of a shopper, Cedric. So, you know, a million dollars in Amazon gift cards. I just give half of that away. <laughs> Okay. See, I'm gonna try to. Get, I'm gonna get the Amazon gift cards, and then I'm gonna try to feel, flip that um, for uh, cash. You know, well, you too young to remember, but back in the day, you know, they say, "All right, well, I got these food stamps. You give me cash." Oh, they still do that. <laughs> oh, okay. so, that's not a. That's not a. That's not an old thing. They, they they still do that. That's something that's that's something that's never gonna change. As long as they got food stamps out, people people gonna find a way to make some extra money. So. Okay, see, I didn't know they still did that. Yeah, hey, look, we all learn something new every day, doesn't matter how old you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you for playing that round of Would You Rather. Um, so <clears throat> what's one thing that uh you know now that you wish you had known when you when you first got started in your career? Um 
I think I, I think I, I should have known or wish I would have known um, the trials and tribulations that that I was going to have to go through in order to get to this point. Um, that I, I'm very grateful for them. But, you know, everybody always says that you've gone back in time, you'd have done this differently, you'd have said this d differently, you might have you might have picked up on this a little differently. Um, so that's that's basically what um, what I wish I would have known, just the, the trials and tribulations that, that I was going to have to endure and go through um, in order to get to this point. But I'm, I'm grateful for each and every one of them. Awesome. 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 Um, you know, sometimes um, we have those down days, right? We, we have we, we can we have as many good days as we want to, as many great days as we want to. But we all at some point have one of those down days. And sometimes we know why we're down and sometimes we're just like, why am I feeling like this? Right. So what do you do uh, to pick yourself up when you have those down days? Um, when I well, when I know why I'm having a down day, um, I usually call my support system. Um, I usually call and just talk things out um, between my family and, and, and my uh, my friends and my, my girlfriend. I, you know, call and and just, you know, say I, I need a ear and just just let it all out. And then once, you know, once I'm done, if I feel better or if I need if I need a response or some advice, then they give that to me. But uh, my support system does very well knowing um, when I need advice and when I just need to be heard. heard. Um, awesome. And then the days that I don't know why, why I'm having a bad day and why I feel this way. Um, I, I, I go to my prayer corner in my bedroom and I, and I just talk to God and just figure out what, what it is um, that I, that I need to, to do in order to get out of this mode. Um, is there something I, I, I need to learn from, from being in this mode? Um, and then um, one of my outlets is to go and play golf. Anybody that knows me is uh, knows that I'm an avid golfer, um, and so that's that's an outlet that I that I need in my life um, in order to be around nature, in order to be around the quiet, um, and just be able to fellowship with 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 other guys and and other girls who just enjoy the sport and just want to just talk. I, I can take off my my educator hat for for a few minutes and just be branded. Um, and, and just go out there and just hang with the fellas and just and just play and enjoy them. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I, I like to uh, uh, put music on and uh, I'll put my beats on and turn it up. And I'm always it's always going to you know take me to another level and turn that around. Or I'll go pull up a uh, Eric Thomas uh, video and within three minutes. See, <laughs> your mindset's changed. <laughs> now I know. Now I know this is your show. But I'm going to ask you because I'm a big music person too. Uh, what's your right. What's your go to song that that you listen to when you're down? Wobble. No. <laughs> now you know what? I, out of all the songs that have ever been created, I would have never guessed that 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 would have been your answer. Uh, it is because it's just um, I just love the tempo. No, I, I I'm not a a, a dancer. Okay. Well, I can dance. I can dance when I'm sitting down. Uh, it's a matter when I put those two feet together, it's just it goes crazy. <laughs> well, we'll just we'll just make sure you stay in your seat then whenever we get a, we get a big group. We don't we don't want everybody messing up and, and messing up the dance. You just wobble in your seat and we'll have a good old time. Hey, I tell them I'm the best chair dancer around. <laughs> But uh, so, hey, what advice, uh, Brandon, uh, would you give to young minority teachers who are thinking of leaving the profession? Because we have a lot. I, I, I talk to people, um, uh, not, I'm not gonna say every day, but uh, a lot, and they're thinking of leaving the profession. And I'm specifically, uh, now you can have a message for everybody, but I'm also, I'm, right now I'm specifically talking about these minority teachers that are leaving the profession. Um, well, one thing I, I will say, um, instead of trying to, to leave the profession, uh, think of different ways that, that you can enhance the profession. Think of different ways that you can recruit others. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be very transparent um, because there's not a, a lot of minority teachers, um, you know, we, especially minority males. Um, you know, we're 
the only minority, you know, the only male African American male or the African American woman um, that's in the building. Um, and so, you know, you can feel isolated at times um, mm -hmm. and, and feel like, you know, you're being looked at in a different way. Um, you know, people go to you for certain things. Um, I, I think um, education in general needs to get rid of this stereotype that um, that because we're minorities that, you know, we deal with discipline in a different way. And so they, they bring, you know, they, they bring discipline to to the minority teachers and think that, you know, they they know how to how to deal with it. Um, and I'm speaking specifically, you know, in, in low income areas and, and things like that. Uh, but I, I, I would uh, I would encourage people to instead of thinking about how to leave, think, think about how to recruit. Um, and then for those leaders that are out here that impact um, education, not just in their buildings or in their school district, but um, but globally and nationally, um, think think of ways that you could that you that you can recruit uh, African American teachers and 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 make it so that they uh, that they feel appreciated, that they feel like they're not in the minority um, in, in the school in the school building in the school district. Um, let's get rid of that that stereotype. Um, let, let's let's get away from um, trying to find people for the wrong purposes. And what I mean by that um, is trying to hire a, a black male to be a, an administrator or to be a teacher because um, the district told you that your that your district is not diverse enough. Um, you know, educators talk. Um, and so, and, and, and educators, you know, for the, are, are not stupid. So they, they know that, you know, if you're calling me in for an interview um, to go into a, a, a suburban, um, you know, white school, predominantly white school, um, and you're asking me to be an administrator, for the most part, it's because you're trying to change the diversity. Um, and, and instead of um, just trying to get one, get many or have a different conversation with me um, instead mm -hmm. of instead of instead of making me feel like, you know, I'm going to be the the token um, uh, uh, African-American male in, in the district or in the school. Um, talk to me about what your plans are in order to recruit more people that look like me um, instead of making me the token person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I agree with that. I love your message also to um, uh, those African-American people that may be potentially uh, or who, who are considering uh, leaving a profession is more of a challenge than, than, than a message. And and um, hopefully it inspires those people uh, or encourages them and help empower them to um, make change versus leaving. Yes, absolutely. Right? It's easier to leave. It's easy to leave a, a, a situation um, when the task looks too tall. Uh, but if you stick it out, and you put you put things in place and put one foot in front of the other and let God lead the rest of the way. You'll, you'll get to the end eventually. You'll, you'll right. get to that purpose eventually. Yes, absolutely. And I actually so I have Danita um, uh, comment uh, on the screen here. And I um, I I re it reminded me that she told me that uh, you're her a nephew or her cousin. Yeah, her cousin. Her cousin. cousin. OK. All right. Um, awesome. Well. Uh, she's a great person, uh, obviously an educator as, uh, as well. Um, so uh, we'll be talking again on Thursday. Uh, okay. So uh, yes, uh, we're part of a, uh, a group uh, that gets together on Thursdays. Um, in fact, we, we we do a lot of stuff in schools. Um, we have a, okay. a, a youth leadership program it's called Wave Youth Leadership, and uh, so we'll be we meet every Thursday to talk about that. Um, okay. And, great. Um, yeah. So what absolutely excites you right now? I mean, besides being promoted to principal, what else excites you right now? Um, I, I'm just excited for the challenge. Um, I'm excited for, um, for where Richard Allen is getting ready to go. Um, you know, we, we've done a great job um, over the last three years of um, excelling and reaching new heights, but I believe we can, we can go even further. Um, I, I, I believe that there is no ceiling to where Richard Allen can go. Um, and the vision that I have, not just for the building, but for the community, um, I, I, I believe, you know, with, with everyone's help, everybody has a role in, in, in this building. Everybody has a role in the community. And if we all join hands and, and, and come together 
for that one purpose and that one vision um, and become like-minded, um, then, then you know, we'll, we'll see Richard Allen just soar to new heights and go places that, you know, probably I never even would have thought that, that they can go. Um, and my biggest thing, you know, is that when, when, uh, when I leave here, um, you know, when I, when it's my time, when God says my time is up, that Richard Allen can still um, be productive and Richard Allen can still um, thrive w without me because I I'm just a person in this seat, um, you know, and I, and I can, I can leave tomorrow, uh, but the school is always going to be here. The school is always going to be a focal point in the community. And, and we, we thrive on the fact that we don't just teach our kids um, academics, we teach our kids about life. And we, we make sure that when they walk out of this door, that not only do they have it up here, but they have it up here in here as well. And they have it in their spirit as well. Uh, right. what, what a good person looks like and, and what a good student acts like and, and how to carry yourself when you're out in public. Um, right. So we continue to do that, then we'll change this whole community around. Yes, absolutely. 100% agree with that. You know, the law of environment says growth thrive, thrives in conducive environments, right? So give our audience, uh, Brandon, um, one or two things, two or three things um, that you do to help or that you're going to do in your new uh, principal role uh, to help your team grow and develop. Um, again, going back to my, my word, um, purpose. Um, and just making sure that that I'm supporting. Um, I want to be a leader that is that is supportive um, and encouraging. Again, I've been I've been in the seat where, you know, I was an educator and, and I was a teacher in the classroom um, and I wasn't making decisions. So I'm not far removed from that. So mm -hmm. keeping that in mind, um, understanding, you know, where teachers are coming from um, and, and sitting down with them and having honest conversations about what they're feeling. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, we we as teachers get into our classrooms and, and, and just hunker down because that's that's ours. Like, you know, we, we make it personal to us and say these are our, our students. And, and you um, instead of reaching out, you know, you kind of isolate yourself at times um, because you want to make sure that, you know, you're you're doing uh, what you're supposed to be doing and you making sure that you're carrying out. Um, what you what you've set to carry out. Um, but to know that you have support around you and that you um, you're not in it by yourself is, mm -hmm. is important to um, to teacher retention. It's important to uh, a teacher's uh, mentality and their emotional state as the year goes on, because like you said earlier, there's there's going to be days when you're down. There's going to be days where the lesson didn't really go so well. <laughs> right. um, and, and and so, you know, you need somebody um, that you can rely on. Um, and, and typically you look to your to your building principal um, to, to give you that push, to give you that nudge, that word of encouragement um, to even sit down and pray with you when you're going through something personal to get that out of your spirit before you before you walk in the door, um, before right. you you get in front of those students. So um, if I can be that and, and, and coach my, my teachers. Um, to teach effectively and, and to build those relationships with those students um, and, and make sure that that they have their best interests at heart, uh, then we'll get to where we need to get to. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Agree with that. Thanks for, for sharing that with, uh, with our audience. So what things are you currently reading right now? Um, so I'm currently reading um, a bunch of books because, uh, you know, I'm uh, new um, to the principal uh, seat. Um, so I'm always trying to find different ways uh, to to uh, educate myself and to grow um, as a person, as an educator. But one book that I'm reading right now is called Leadership Soul, and it's 21 soulful, lead soulful leadership lessons from Motown. Um, and a friend of mine, a former colleague, um, got me onto this book because they know that I, I love music um, and that I sing. Um, and that I, I'm very, I have a, uh, what people, what most people who know me would say, I have an old soul. Um, so when you said the wobble, that's why I laughed because I was expecting something like, you know, Anita Baker or Al Green or Jeffrey Osborne or Earth, Wind and Fire, someplace like that. But you, you went back to the, to, to the, uh, to the 2000s. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, more of my, my generation when I, when I grew up. Um, 
but I, I it's it's relatable um, to me because uh, a lot of the songs um, in there um, they they I, I know, and so um, he gets you to think about when you read the, the each chapter, he gets you to go back and listen to the song and find the the things that he wants you to find in in the songs. Oh wow. um, and, and so um, and and it ties right into being a, a leader and it talks about exactly what I just talked about, not uh, not being a, a, a leader that is a dictator or anything like that, but being a leader who serves um, and, and, and who supports and, and encourages um, his, his staff members. OK, you said it's called Soulful Leadership. Yes, Leadership Soul, 21 Soulful Leadership Lessons from Motown. OK, yeah, I want to have to uh, check check that uh <laughs> excuse me check that book out i'm a big uh reader so i'll uh, be putting that on my uh, on my list uh check that out i might be able to use that in some of my uh uh, uh training sessions uh with educators absolutely so. yeah you have awesome. to you have to do what sticks to your personality see i'm since i'm a big music person you know my my staff members are here a lot of a lot of different kind different genres of uh, of music and and music. i sing too so uh, you know, they might they might hear me sing a song one day in a staff meeting just, just, to, uh -oh. just to just to keep things up. OK, well, in my next uh, um, um, uh, training session with teachers, I'm going to make sure I don't sing because uh, it's going to clear the room. Well, um, yeah, you, know, you got to play to your strengths <laughs> and your weaknesses. You know, every, like, like I said, everybody has talents. And if you thought that was a talent, you definitely would be broke if you if, if you can't see. So, yeah. Now I, I went to college playing on a, a trumpet scholarship, so I can okay. play a trumpet. But um, um, you know, singing, oh man, uh, it's a little bit different. Different. Um, so a couple more, a uh, couple more questions for you, and then we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, if you could change one thing in the world, what would that one thing be, and why? Um, if I could change one thing in the world, I think it would be um, to provide an opportunity for um, an equal opportunity for everybody, uh, not just kids, but people, uh, you know, adults as well. Uh, you know, uh, we, we're in an era right now where we talk about um, Black Lives Matter and, and, and uh, really kind of spotlight on um, what's going on in the African-American community. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not uh, anything that nobody knows or doesn't know. I mean, as I should mm -hmm. say, um, that uh, you know, we're we are the minority when it comes to um, getting uh, uh, different job opportunities, um, getting um, uh, houses, certain houses in, in certain neighborhoods, and, and, and things like that. Um, so, if I could, if I could change one thing, it would be to make sure that everybody gets an equal opportunity. Everybody's on the same playing field, no matter what race you are, um, no matter what your economic background is. Um, if you're willing to work for it and you're and you're willing to put forth the effort, then you should be able to have that opportunity. Um, and it also provides opportunities for our children as well. Um, you know, it's no secret that, you know, um, people who, who are uh, middle to high income, uh, middle class, I should say, um, get, dip, give are able to give different experiences to their children than low income families. You know they they have to uh, you know sacrifice certain things in order for for children to have certain experiences. Such something as simple as um, going to Disney World. I mean, you'd be surprised um, how many families I've run into over the last ten years who've never been out of Cincinnati. Um, and I believe part of that is because you 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 know it's hard to afford those things. Um, when you're not provided certain certain opportunities, um, so if, if if that's something that that I believe needs to change, um, because like I said before, when you're gone, all you have is your memories, and right. and what better way um, to let people leave off of this earth than to have than to be able to provide opportunities to have uh, great memories. I mean, I I'm only 31, and I and God willing, I have a long life uh, still left to live. But, you know, I, I thrive on 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 the memories that that I have growing up, um, family vacations and, and being um, being able to to see different things um, in the United States, being able to travel outside of the United States, um, learning different cultures and learning different backgrounds, not just 
in a history book where they just tell you a piece of it, but actually being able to go and venture out and go to different places and learn from people who are actually in it, um, who yeah. are actually a part of that culture. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, that I grew up in a family that uh, was able to afford those opportunities. But uh, I, as I have gotten older now and, and have gotten deeper into education, I want those same experiences for everyone. Yes, I absolutely love that. So, you know, Brandon, I always ask this question. It's the final question I have for you. Um, I always ask this question to uh, everybody that's on Talk Leadership with Cedric. And the question is, if there was a book written about you, what would the title be and what would the summary in the back of the book say about you? Well, to me, the book would still be blank because I'm still writing my story. OK. <laughs> I'm still right. writing my story when 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 I'm done, when I when I when the Lord tells me that I'm that I'm done. So right now, all you can put on the book is January 20th, 1990. The dash that I'm working on right now to make an impact in this life and then leave the other side blank until the Lord says, well done. OK. All right. So title would be what? In progress. Yeah, you can say that. You 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 can say that. Or you, you know, you can say something like, you know, um, 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 on on the on the path on the pathway to to, to excellence. Awesome, absolutely like that. Um, uh, that you said, hey, uh, I'm still in 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 uh, on the path to excellence, and um, there's a lot more to to give and and um, to bring. Thank you, uh, Brandon, for. Um, uh, taking the challenge to, to come on the show. And I want to, folks, I, I don't know, Brandon, Brandon, we met, we met uh, for the first time uh, to see each other today. Um, and uh, we met through a Facebook group and, and I put out a challenge out there to um, principals and superintendents uh, that I've been interviewing all this month, the month of July and, and, and part of August. Um, and uh, Brandon um, accepted the challenge to come onto the show and, and talk about his vision for his school and talk about, um, what things he wants to see in, in education. And I want to thank you for um, um, accepting uh, to come on the show. And I want to thank you for creating this this platform um, in order for people like me who look like me um, and who and uh, who are of, uh, of, of African-American descent and other, you know, of other descents um, to be able to come on this show and, and, and talk about their journey um, to being an educator, to being a principal. Um, because everybody's journey is different. Um, and, and, you know, um, you might, I, I might have sparked something in somebody to, to keep going um, and to keep pushing on. Um, so I, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Awesome. 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 Well, folks, this is another show of Talk Leadership with Cedric. You know, as I always say, everybody needs a little TLC. And I love bringing this show to you every week. Now, the next show is going to be with our Thursday edition. And um, on the Thursday edition, we have another principal that's going to be on the show. Her name is Amy McDonald. She is a one-time high school dropout who is now a Ph.D. candidate and a principal at uh, Ombud. Um, Buds, Budsman West uh, School. So come here her Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time and then wake up early Friday morning with another version of Friday Mental Motivation. You know, at 8.30 Central every Friday, we're going to bring a little pain to you. 15 minutes of high energy pain to help you end your week, start your weekend out great. Just make sure you wake up early and be ready for Friday mental motivation. As I always tell you folks, the only difference between ordinary and extraordinary is the word extra. Now I know the word is extraordinary for the educators out there, but I like uh, extraordinary. The only difference between winning and losing is belief. The only difference between hot water and boiling water is one degree. You see, at 211 degrees, water is hot. At 212 degrees, water boils. With boiling water comes steam with steam. You can power a train. The only difference between a person reaching their full potential and not reaching their full potential is desire. So make sure you go out there and put a little extra in everything that you do. And as I always tell you before we go, folks, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And don't be on the menu. Thank you guys and good night.